Okay, so welcome everyone and good afternoon. And so it is my pleasure to share my topic about the difference between psychology, counseling and psychotherapy. Okay, so I believe that all of you intend to study psychology and you may have those questions in your mind. Uh, for example, uh, you may want to help people with emotional problems, especially during this COVID period, a lot of people uh, are suffering from uh, different kinds of emotional problems. And there are also so many different programs in psychology and different pathways, and then you may have no idea which one to choose. So in this seminar, I will talk about how to select the programs that met with your goals. And uh, some of you may want to engage in mental health sector and get into the pathway to become a clinical psychologist or a counselor or some other mental health specialist. And apart from those traditional pathways, such as uh, getting into the program of clinical psychology or counseling, so what else what else can you choose? And, and for me, I didn't get into the program of clinical psychology and counseling. And instead, I got into the PhD program in psychology. And I am now practicing mindfulness-based interventions for people who feel stressful in workplace. So I will also share my unique journey later. Okay, so I start with the definitions of psychology, counseling, and psychotherapy. So basically, psychology is about the study of human minds and how human mind works and how our mind will affect behavior. And then counseling and psychotherapy are a bit similar, but I will later show you the difference between counseling and psychotherapy. And both of them involve uh, some kind of professional help um, in which in, when you have some mental or emotional problems, then you may have one-on-one -on -one session with a counselor or a therapist, and then they will provide some kind of mental help treatment. To illustrate the difference between those terms graphically and basically, there are two kinds of programs in psychology. So for example, you can get into the research psychology program such as MPhil or PhD program. And during those years in the program, you will conduct different researches in psychology. Uh, you may examine different theories or hypotheses. And some of you may be more interested in applied psychology program in which uh, you may not have to conduct intensive research but instead you will learn some concrete skills about how to conduct counseling sessions or psychotherapy sessions. So I believe that most people are more interested in applied psychology program more than research psychology program. But it doesn't mean that research psychology is useless. Instead, uh, research psychology will uh, establish very important theories and uh, research findings uh, that can really serve the provide the theoretical foundations for counseling and psychotherapy. So in case you would like to get into the uh, mental health sector, what comes to your mind is uh, maybe uh, clinical psychology or, or counseling. And um, I would like to share one important point that uh, is, uh, there are different kinds of target group and some of them may have mental disorder, some of them may have some mild or moderate problem, but they don't really have mental disorders. And um, for those people, they may struggle um, about whether or not to seek service from clinical psychologists or from counseling, uh, from counselor, because they may not feel that they, they have the need to uh, visit those mental health professionals, but they will also like to seek help from some other channels. So, and there are two kinds of approach in mental health service. So, so for those with mental disorder, they have they may have to seek help from clinical psychologists or counseling to cure their disorder. But if they do not have disorder, they can also get some other 
mental health services uh, before it is too late um, to seek help, they can still get into some other activities or some other classes to prevent uh, mental disorder from developing. So that's why uh, there are two major types of mental health service. And many of you may just think about clinical psychology or counseling offered by registered professionals. And in addition to clinical psychology and counseling, and there are in fact many other mental health services offered by certified or experienced practitioners. So in case you would not like to uh, get into the pathway of clinical psychology or counseling, there are many different options uh, in, if you would like to uh, serve people and have people or bring happiness to uh, more people. So for example, there are mindfulness interventions. Uh, I, I'm not sure how many of you have heard about mindfulness meditation before. And mindfulness meditation is getting more and more popular in Singapore. And there, there are a few centers, a few professionals offering mindfulness classes in Singapore. And I also find that there are some other additional therapy uh, not offered by clinical psychologists or, or counselors. So you may have heard about therapy with us, with music or with dance or with other sports. And typically those therapy with us, music and sports are offered by coaches or practitioners with specialized training. So there's many different types of mental health services uh, targeting on different individuals uh, with different situations. So I would like to introduce five major types of mental health professionals and they have different backgrounds, different durations of trainings, and they also have different um, specialized jobs. So I will introduce uh, one by one so that you can know the difference between them. So first of all, many people have confusion between psychiatrists and clinical psychologists. And in fact, psychiatrists, um, uh, psychiatrists will have medical background instead of psychology background. And usually they treat mental illness using uh, some kind of medicines or biomedical approach because they are well trained in the medicine background and they, um, they, they are very good at uh, prescribing medications for people with mental disorder. Um, so typically they have to undergo um, better training in medicine or surgery and then they have more specialized training uh, under the master degree in medicine that would take more than uh, 11 to 13 years before they become a registered psychiatrist. So if you want to be a psychiatrist, then you, you should follow the pathway of medicine training, but not psychology training. And then uh, if you would like to be a clinical psychologist, then uh, then you will undergo the training. Uh, you must have the bachelor degree in psychology, and then you must also enroll in the program of master or doctoral degree um, of psychology uh, with specialized clinical psychology training. So usually clinical psychologists are responsible for uh, diagnosis. So, so they, they will have a very formal assessment of individuals whether or not that person uh, have mental disorder or not. And then they would also be responsible for offering psychological treatment uh, uh, of se more severe mental disorders, uh, such as severe depression or schizophrenia or personality disorder. Because for other mental health professionals, such as counselors or coaches, they may not have the competence to provide treatment for people with severe mental disorders. So clinical psychologists are well trained to uh, treat those people. So, so that's why they also need many years training, at least eight to 10 years be 
before they can be a registered clinical psychologist. And then uh, some of you may want to become a counselor and usually they offer help to people with moderate problems in jobs or in relationships. For example, they have um, very huge uh, fights with their boss or with their partner and they would like to seek professional help from a counselor um, because the counselors are equipped with different psychological tools uh, that can really address specific problems. So they, they may seek help from counselors instead of clinical psychologists. And usually those, pro those people with moderate problems in jobs or relationships may not have mental disorders. I, I just have uh, some, some fight with my, with my colleagues or with my partners, but I have no idea how to solve the problems. In this case, I can have a consultation with a counselor to, to see which kind of tools I can adopt to solve the problem. So if you would like to be a counselor, then uh, at least you, you must have a bachelor degree in psychology or in social science, and then you get in the master degree in counseling. And after supervisor practice, then you can register yourself you know, to become a um, counselor. So it takes about six years, uh, starting from bachelor degree uh, to, uh, uh, the, to the end of master degree in counseling. And then for those people who would not like to be a clinical psychologist or counselor, then they can also offer uh, specific therapy, uh, depending on what kind of specialized protocols they, they learned to offer. So um, there are so many different specialized tools or protocols for, for them to learn. Um, you may have heard about family therapy, art therapy, music therapy, uh, dance therapy, and mindfulness-based interventions are also uh, one of the protocols that they can um, offer to people uh, so, so they can really learn about how to address their problems using uh, mindfulness meditation. So um, under those specialities, they uh, usually have a graduate diploma or a bachelor or even a master degree and then they get into different specialized training courses. So for example, for those who would like to be a, an art therapist, then they will get into specialized program uh, that can train themselves to be a, an art therapist. And then if they would like to be a teacher of mindfulness, based meditation, then they will also get into the specialized training courses to train them to teach mindfulness meditation. But usually when they offer this kind of specialized um, therapy, they, they should have some background knowledge in psychology. So that's why they will learn psychology from a graduate diploma, or, or they may even have more trainings in a bachelor or master degree programs. Of course, the more training they have, the more solid foundations they, they have when they offer the therapist. And then uh, you may also heard about some other um, enrichment classes and workshops and activities. For example, during high school, you may have joined some award band programs or, or some classes such as Tai Chi or Judo or, or some other uh, classes. They are offered by uh, specific coaches or teachers. They may not have very good educational background, but they, they are very professional and experienced in uh, Tai Chi or, or, or those activities. And those activities are also very important um, in preventing mental illness. Yeah. So, so, so you can see different kinds of mental health services. So some kind of services uh, focus on curing mental disorders and usually those are offered by professional clinical psycho psychologists or psychiatrists. And there, 
So different people serve different roles, actually. So for example, coaches and uh, teachers will offer enrichment activities to reduce the onset of mental illness. And then for those people who have moderate or mild strugglings or problems uh, in their jobs or relationships, then they can get into uh, different classes or different therapists, uh, or they may seek help from counseling. And those with severe mental illness would be referred to um, psychiatrists or clinical psychologists. I would like to show you this graph to illustrate uh, different target groups and how target groups, how different target groups are served by different mental health professionals. So, uh, so according to some news report or, or some informal uh, survey, about 10 to 12 percent Singaporeans uh, suffer from mental disorder at least once in their life. And so there are a few proportions of people with mental disorders and they, uh, they have to seek help from psychologists or psychiatrists. But many people suffer from some mild or moderate problems and they do not yet have mental disorder. So I'm not sure if you have personal experience of that. So um, for example, I feel very stressful at work or, or I have some problems. I have no idea how to deal with my own emotional problems, but I don't really want to visit clinical psychologists because I, I don't think I have mental disorder and I'm scared of being stigmatized uh, of having mental illness. And in this case, what kind of services I, 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 I can have so, so that I can help myself, I, I can have some, some other activities or class for, for me to reduce my stress. Yeah. So, so here you can see how different roles actually work together. So you do not really have to be a clinical psychologist or psychiatrist in order to offer uh, mental health services uh, because there are different roles, different, uh, different, uh, offering different help to different people. And if you would like to offer psychotherapy, and again, you do not have to be a clinical psychologist in order to offer psychotherapy. So you, you can uh, be a counselor, you can be an individual therapist, uh, as far as you are trained to offer that specific psychotherapy such as CBT or, um, or ACT, then you can already offer this kind of therapy to, um, to general public. And in fact, psychologists in Singapore are not regulated by the government, not regulated by the Ministry of Health. So, um, so it can be an, an advantage or, or a disadvantage. Uh, an advantage is that Anyone in, uh, anyone in Singapore can offer psychotherapy to different people. Um, although the psychologist may not be licensed or registered with a government agency or professional board. And in case you would like to seek help uh, from a psychologist, of course, you, you can ask that psychologist what kind of training he or she had uh, you, you can seek evidence of that person's ability to practice. And then for employees, they, they can also um, ask job, job applicants to, uh, to show their past trainings in order to decide whether or not to hire them. I believe that man, more and more people are interested in getting in the mental health sectors, especially during this period of COVID-19. And the impact of COVID-19 is not limited to physical health, but um, it also has impact on mental health. 
when you are trying to search for uh, different newspaper articles about the impact of COVID-19 on mental health, you can find quite a lot of news from CNA, from BBC, from insurance business. And you may realize that COVID-19 has a very large impact on mental health and we should not underestimate its impact. Because if we ignore the impact on mental health, then uh, more and more people uh, will develop mental disorder and it may be too late to seek help. And uh, I believe that all of you have direct experience of those impacts. Uh, your, our lives are really affected by uh, different restrictions. Um, such as restricted social gatherings, uh, so we, 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 we cannot really uh, meet with our friends or family members. So there's also restricted entertainment. When, when I'm, I'm feeling stressful, I cannot uh, reduce stress by watching movie or, or by having a drink with a friend. And I also cannot travel to, to other places to, to make myself happier. And even worse, I, I may suffer from job, uh, job loss or income loss. I may not be able to afford expensive service from clinical psychologists because uh, when I seek help from clinical psychologists, one session costs more than uh, $100. I cannot really afford that. And those restrictions have very huge impacts on emotions. So especially when this impact lasts for a long time, for more than one and a half year, many people have been suffering from those um, emotions. They, they feel lonely, especially when they cannot really meet with um, other, other friends or other people. And then uh, they, they may feel depressed or hopeless. They have no idea when this pandemic will end. And then they may be worried about job loss or income loss. They, uh, they have no idea if they will be fired tomorrow. So there are huge impact on emotions. And at the same time, there is growing demand for mental health services. So, so they, they uh, really want to seek help from mental health services. And when they want to seek help from mental health services, again, they, they have these questions. They, they have no idea where to seek help. Uh, should they receive psychotherapy? Should they uh, visit a counselor? Or, or should, should, should they go to other place? Um, to, to seek some other source of help. So here I would like to share to you different kinds of interventions in case some of you do not know. And when we talk about mental health services, what comes to our mind is those traditional interventions. So we, we think that uh, mental health service is limited to therapeutic or counseling session. And I feel that I can only visit psych or clinical psychologists or counselors to have one-on-one -on -one sessions. In fact, there are many contemporary interventions. So in, in case you, you feel sad but you do not have mental disorder, there are many other options for you to choose. For example, there are some stress reduction workshops and they, they will uh, teach you some skills about how to relax your muscles. Then there are classes of mindfulness meditation in, in which you, you will just uh, sit and, and meditate. And there are also other online lectures or other talks. And you, you can also learn some simple skills or some uh, straightforward theories about how to understand the linkage between um, unhappy emotions and thoughts and body sensations. And then some people may, may also download some mental health app in case they would like to uh, help themselves through the uh, procedures and guidance of those mental health apps. And um, those traditional interventions are typically offered by um, psychiatrists, clinical psychologists or counselors. And so, so they must be licensed or registered so, so that they can offer those intensive 
therapeutic sessions. On the other hand, those contemporary interventions are offered, uh, can be offered by many, uh, many, many other professionals. They can be offered by therapists, by coaches, by leaders, mentors, or consultants. So they may not really need very professional background, uh, but they may be very experienced in meditation. They are very experienced in dance or art practice. Then, then they can really um, uh, have have offered those other options for people who suffer from stress or other emotional problems. That's why uh, different professionals, different practitioners um, have uh, offer service for different target groups. So for people, for patients or clients with severe mental disorders, then they are better served by um, intensive counseling or therapeutic sessions from uh, those professionals. But uh, for general public who have stress, who, who have men, uh, emotions, problems, then uh, there are some other options for, for them. Uh, and usually those options are easily, easily accessible and cheaper, uh, more affordable. Uh, for example, when you attend a mindfulness meditation class, then the hour rate is about, uh, is about 25 or, or about $15, something like that. So that is much more affordable than uh, having a therapeutic session with a clinical psychologist or counselor. Okay, so here I would like to share to you some career options in mental health. And after you are trained to, to become a mental health professional, then um, then you can be a full-time staff in educational or health-related settings, or you can be uh, you you can practice as individual, independent, or uh, independent therapist or consultant or or coaches or teacher. So the major difference between them is that um, when when you get a full-time job in an organization, then you serve clients in that organization that hires you so 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 uh, that would be very stable you you just stay in the same organization then you you get a fixed amount of salary from that organization and some people may uh, prefer independent or private practice uh, because that is more fle flexible and and their clients are not limited to one organization they can serve clients in their own organization, and then they can also look for clients from other places. In addition, they can also accept temporary employments from uh, different schools, different hospitals, different organizations, different centers. So, so they, they can reach so many different people, and they can have different sources of income as well. And some People may not really prefer this mode because the income would be quite unstable. Uh, it depends on how many clients they, they can get. But their income can be more than some full-time staff, actually. Uh, if they are very experienced, if they have a huge base of clients. So here I would like to share to you my background. So, so my journey is quite unique because I didn't uh, get into the program of clinical psychology and counseling. So instead, I got into the PhD program, which is a research psychology program, and in which I conduct a research and submit a thesis and get the PhD degree. And in addition, I am trained to teach mindfulness-based reduc stress reduction and mindfulness-based cognitive therapy. Okay, so I can also share to you the, the timeline of my pathway, how many years of education and uh, other trainings I went through. And I got into the Bachelor in Psychology in 2003, and, and then uh, after that I had two years of entry in Psychology. And, and then I got uh, a job of lecturing um, in in uh, an institution, 
and and then I get into the PhD in psychology. And during the PhD period, I also um, learned about mindfulness meditation because I find it's very helpful to reduce my stress during the PhD period. And I I feel that mindfulness meditation is uh, really helpful. So so I'm also determined to teach mindfulness to general public. So I got in uh, I got into the tr specialized training course so that I can teach mindfulness to general public. So after I graduate, I I I I practice independently. I didn't get. Uh, full-time job in any organization. Instead, I accept appointment, accept jobs from uh, different institutions and different organizations um, in which I teach psychology courses uh, in some institutions. Um, and in addition, I also teach mindfulness classes in, uh, in different activity centers. So, so my income is sort of quite unstable, but that is the mode that I really enjoy. Although my income is unstable, I can have more flexible uh, time in which I can really arrange uh, the work period. And, and then uh, when I would like to take a break for myself to develop my uh, spiritual life, and then I can also take a break to, to attend meditation retreat. If I have a full-time job, then I cannot really take a break for, for maybe two or three weeks uh, to, for, for a meditation retreat or for vacation. So, so, so that is my own decision. So that's why I am offering mindfulness-based cognitive therapy and also mindfulness-based stress reduction. And my target group is more for people who are bothered by recurring negative thoughts and they do not have mental disorder. Uh, so, so quite a lot of people have struggles about uh, their negative thoughts. They, they may uh, feel very bad up about themselves. They, they may be quite pessimistic. And at the same time, they do not have very severe mental disorder. Uh, they, they do not have clinically diagnosed uh, anxiety and disorder. And in this case, they can really benefit from mindfulness-based cognitive therapy in which they, um, they gain more awareness of their thoughts, emotions, and body sensations. And then there are also specialized tools for, for them uh, about how to get through those uh, patterns, uh, those thoughts and emotions. And then uh, there are also many people who suffer from high, high level of stress, uh, uh, they, they have long, very long work hours and they have no idea how to reduce their stress. And that's why um, they can really benefit from mindfulness-based stress reduction. So my target group is more for general public without mental disorder. And, and then uh, in the mindfulness-based meditation classes, they, they come into the classes by group in which they do not really have to share about their personal issues. They, they just come to the class and then learn how, how to meditate by sitting or walking or eating. And, and then they do not really have the concern about stigma or discrimination. And it sounds perfectly normal when you attend a class to reduce your stress rather than seeing, uh, seeking help from, from a clinical psychologist. And I also feel less, less stressful because I, I am not dealing with people with very uh, severe mental disorder. And, and that is the work I really feel enjoyable and that really fits my personality because I don't think I can really handle uh, those people uh, with very severe problems. So, so I, that's, my, that's also my limitation. So I uh, get into this pathway and, and offer this kind of, of mental health service. <clears throat> yeah. So um, some of you may be quite interested in <laughs> whether I can make a living from, from that without a full-time job. And I can also share to you my experience about 
um, the the price rate actually, and it is not first, and it depends on the number of students and teaching hours. So, so so I receive different contracts from different centers, organizations, and institutions, and some institutions or some organizations offer a high pay rate, and some offer lower pay rate. Uh, so, and um, and the range is up is from seventy to two hundred dollars per hour, and the average is about a hundred and twenty dollars per hour. And then um, I can also share to you the teaching hours. Um, so that is my personal experience, and other people may have higher or lower teaching hours uh, during school terms and summer holidays. And the teaching hours include my uh, lecturing classes in educational institution and also my mindfulness meditation classes in uh, different organizations. And usually I teach about 15 hours per week during school terms and about eight hours per week uh, during summer holiday. And so, so I feel that it is uh, enough to maintain my daily expenses so and and I do not really have to work for so many hours and those teaching hours do not include my preparation work uh, of course uh, before I teach I have to spend quite a lot of time to prepare especially when I'm t going to teach some new classes I that I'm not familiar with that is the, the reference for, for you in case you would like to um, practice privately or independently, you, you do not really have uh, a full-time job, then uh, that is the reference for you. Okay, so at the end of this session, I would like to share to you com some common misperceptions about mental health services. Yeah. For example, when you have emotional problems or when you feel stressful, some people may think that they can only seek help from a psychiatrist, counselor, or a clinical psychologist. Instead, when you feel stressful, you can seek help from many different kinds of professionals. You can seek help from a coach, from a dance therapist, music therapist, or meditation therapist. You can also seek help from a teacher, consultant, mentor, or, or your leader, etc. So you do not always have to visit a psychiatrist or, or a counselor or clinical psychologist. So, so that, those are only uh, some few options. Another misconception is that um, psychiatry, counseling, and clinical psychology are the only effective interventions. They, they think that all other interventions are not effective or, or not reliable. So for example, they may think that oh, music therapy is not reliable or uh, meditation is not reliable. Uh, they, they only trust psychiatrists or counselor or clinical psychologists uh, because uh, they, they, have the, they, they, has, they have to be registered with professional board. And what I would like to share is that um, effectiveness depends on many different factors. So, so it depends on the characteristics of clients. It also depends on the quality of therapists. And personally, I know quite a lot of therapists. They, they are not clinical psychologists, not counselors, but they, they are very mature, very experienced in uh, offering uh, mental health services. Huh? And they also have many years of training and experience and uh, have very high education level. So, so it really depends on the quality of therapists. Huh? So some therapists uh, who do not have very good educational background can uh, be very good at healing. And then, um, one last misconception is that uh, when I would like to offer help for people with psychological issues, some people uh, may think that they can only enroll in counseling on clinical psychology program. That is 
that was also one of my misconceptions when 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 I was undergraduate. But now I realize that um, having a degree related to psychology is is very basic. I I will highly encourage those uh, who would like to get into mental health service to to get at least one degree related to psychology so that you can learn about the basic theories in psychology. That would be very helpful when you offer uh, different kinds of therapy or services uh, to other people. But what further training you, you, you get really depends on your personal goals. So for those people who would like to have a secure job, then uh, of course they feel more secure when they get into counseling or clinical psychology program. But at the same time, those programs are quite competitive and very few people can actually get into those programs. And at the same time, they would like to uh, practice as a psychologist or therapist. And then uh, they can have some other training. Uh, they do not really have to enroll in counseling and cl clinical psychology program. Okay, so I think that's all of my sharing and uh, here comes to the Q&A session. Um, Dr. Yip, I think there's a question mm. here in the chat earlier. Oh, um, I didn't see. Yes, so someone is actually asking with regards to how different are the responsibilities outlined um, as compared to the occupational therapies. I think it was based on one of the slides that you shared earlier of the different, um, you know, roles uh, and the rest. Yes, I believe this is the one. Uh, can, you, can you repeat? May I repeat the question again? Okay, so the question is, how different are the responsibilities outlined here as mm. compared to occupational therapists? Oh, yeah. So, uh, for, let's just try it psychiatrists or clinical psychologists or counselors because they have to register themselves with uh, some professional board then uh, in case you, you have complaints or, or dissatisfaction then you, you can launch your complaint to those professional organizations and then um, for therapist coaches leaders or, or consultants they um, the in, when they are hired by by an organizations, then you you can also launch your complaint with the organizations. But for uh, therapists or, or or some consultants who practice individually or independently, then um, I I don't think you you can launch the complaint with. Uh, to, with any organizations because they are not hired or, or not uh, monitored by any professional boss. And I believe that when when they have to develop their reputation, then then they, they of, of course they would not want to damage their, their reputation. And and usually um, people who, who would like to launch a complaint may may uh, only share their complaints you know, on some discussion board, and or, or, and yeah, they they are not registered or, or licensed by the government. Yeah. So, um, Doctor Yip, I believe mm. there's also another um, request here, mm. um, asking whether you can actually show the. Uh, chart on the different roles that was shown at the beginning of the webinar. Uh, different roles. Uh, which one? This this one or which one? Oh, it's slide three. Sorry. Oh, slide three. Okay. Yeah, okay. The definitions. Would you mind just go through the difference between the counseling and psychotherapy again? Oh, okay. Okay, so um, in general, um, counseling 
is short term and psychotherapy is long term, uh, I would say. So uh, counseling deal with specific problems. Uh, for example, when you have arguments or conflicts with your boss or, or partners, then uh, there. Uh, then counseling will offer some sessions uh, so that you learn how to get through how to get along with other people. And psychotherapy usually uh, deals with more deep-rooted problems, with um, with more complicated causes. They they may have to address their childhood uh, difficulties or, or trauma. And and usually psychotherapy uh, would be longer and require more um, specialized and professional training uh, so, so that you can offer that kind of psychotherapy. They not necessary to be a psychiatrist or, you know, with the kind of degree to be, to be playing as a role as a psychotherapist? Um, so there is no such term called psychotherapist. So, so, so for professional roles, they can be psychiatrists, they can be clinical psychologists, they can be uh, counselors, and um, yeah. But psychotherapy can be offered by different professionals. Uh, as far as you are trained to deliver that specific. Uh, that particular therapy. So, so for example, when you are trained to deliver CBT, uh, no matter you are clinical psychologist or counselors or consultants or other therapists, then you can really offer that particular therapy within your scope of competence. And I think psychologists are not regulated. So as far as you feel confident to offer this particular therapy, then you, you can just offer that therapy by yourself. And of course your clients may, may ask or request um, how competent you feel about yourself to practice that therapy. Then you may have to show your previous training or educational background so, so that they trust you more. Mm. So, so it's not referring to a specific role, it's more of a method of uh, helping people with mental uh, health Issues. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, so, so, yeah. Okay, thanks, hmm. Doctor. Uh, this is Dee here. I was just wondering if I've just been a therapist. Um, would you encourage me to continue getting on to a counselor level and then a psychologist, or would therapist or becoming a counselor be sufficient enough to um, say help people if they are in need basic ones like simple stress problems reduction or whichever that comes along the way? Of course, severe. Um, I don't think we are apt enough to to counsel the person, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We should be recommending them to psychiatrists or whatever the psychologist. But as a basic therapist or counselor, what are my limitations? I mean, how far can I take this in terms of joining, uh, say, my own? If I if I wanted to open up a, a school for counseling or just to be able to guide people, uh, would that be enough or sufficient being a counselor? Mm. Mm. So. Um, I, I think it depends. It really depends on your personal goals. And I would okay. say uh, if you would like to offer uh, some kind of therapy, then um, I, I heard that some therapists will, will have some other specialized training uh, instead of getting into any uh, formal program such as counseling or clinical psychology program. And they also have a lot of students and they, they sometimes share their sessions on, on YouTube and, and get a lot of audience and, and more, more and more exactly. students yeah, get to them. So, and of course, if you have a um, counselor or clinical psychology degree, it would be easier for you to get a full-time job in an organization because I see that many organizations are hiring full-time clinical psychologists or counselor, and they have less off job offer for for other therapists without so-called formal formal uh, educational training. Educational, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But so for uh, for those therapists such as me, um, they they usually practice independently or, or privately. So so for example, I am working with an organization and that organization will um, will, will 
have different causes or different classes that can enhance mental health and and they refer students or classes to me and then i i'm responsible to teach and then i also receive job requests from from elderly elderly centers or or, or uh, teenage activity centers because they find mindfulness meditation really helpful for them to learn how to reduce stress how, how to uh, notice their emotional problems so yeah, it seems to be like the yeah. in thing now uh, this thing called mindfulness coach or mindfulness mm. guru um mm. what's your take on it i mean is that something very relevant for today um mm. yeah so um because this session is not about mindfulness <laughs> meditation sure. yeah, so but i can speak more most shortly yeah, mindfulness meditation is about focusing uh yeah, focusing on the present moment uh, like focusing on breathing or body sensations or some different kinds of movement and yeah so and sure. those are the two versions of mindfulness based um, interventions then you can search uh, learn about it online by searching those terms and my target is more f- about general public not people uh, with mental disorder so so it really depends on what kind of competence you would like to develop and if you have more training or if you um, are more experienced then maybe you can also work with those with mental disorder but if you do not have professional background such as psychiatrist or clinical psychologist then um that then you cannot uh, so f- for example if you are not clinical psychologist then you cannot provide diagnosis yeah so because diagnosis is specialized by clinical psychologists sure yeah so so those are the limitations yeah so but you you can also offer psychological treatment to to people with de- mental disorders depending on your scope of competence Be- because there is no regulations in yeah, by the government uh, as far as you feel competent to offer those treatment then you can proceed yeah i would like to uh, say thank you to all of you who who, uh, who are interested in uh, the, in studying psychology or offering help to people especially during this covid-19 uh, all, all of us are uh, getting through a very difficult period and i believe that more and more people would learn about psychology and mental health uh, and be- because uh, those are the aspects that many people would like to learn how to help themselves and also other people. 